Hi, what's up? Hi, Arya. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. Congratulations for the new album, and I think everybody that has been waiting about uh, for this album also. How I'm feeling? I just want to know how do you choose this? Uh, I mean, this title as your main title of your album. Yeah, I, um, I chose it right after I was sort of getting out of like a really bad, really bad depression, and I wanted the whole album to be just like a yeah, honestly, just like an honest expression day to day what I've. What I feel like, what I'm thinking about, and I didn't want to overcomplicate it. I didn't want it to be some crazy concept. I just wanted it to be <laughs> how I'm feeling. It's very simple. So it's very simple. Just because yeah. like it happens to you, then yeah, yeah, everybody can feel it. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So modern loneliness as the lead single of this mm-hmm. album. Is there any special reason why you chose this one as the? I mean, like this, the main. Uh, song for this album. To me, it's just like, to me, it was like my favorite song on the album, like the most important one, just because it says so much. At least for me, like it just said, it's just really close to my heart. I got a tattoo that said "Modern Loneliness" before the song came out. Um, it's just something I felt really deeply, and honestly, the music video I made for it is probably my favorite music video I've ever made. Uh, it's just a really honest song, I guess. So, and I cry when I play it live. <laughs> I cry. Oh, that's very touching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so I think everybody have been in that situation of like modern loneliness situation where they feel like yeah. they're alone, they're depressed, and maybe they're curious about something. From your side, do you have any tips to move on from this kind of situation? Well, I think this is based on your uh, story. Yeah. Um, for sure. I mean, for me. I think one, it's about I'm still working on this, but becoming a better friend to myself, so I don't feel so alone when I'm not around people. Spending less time just mindlessly on the internet, I think that's a huge thing. I've had to like kind of take a step back and mostly only spend time on social media when I'm posting. Because if I like just go into it, I lose myself, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's like precious time you have to either be with your friends or your family or to be with yourself and, and to mm-hmm. be reflecting and developing a better relationship with yourself. I mean, during this time, it's obviously hard. I started calling my family a lot more. That's been really good. Obviously, and then having deep conversations. Like I think a lot of there's a lot of surface level stuff going on in the world where people don't really talk on a deep level. And I think mm-hmm. to feel truly like seen and known and loved, you have to be totally vulnerable, and other people have to be vulnerable too. And yeah, I think that's so important. So it's like maybe you try to open up to someone else that open might up, help. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's yeah. a good one, actually. Like for us, for I think Indonesian, we're not really, really, really aware of that kind of mental awareness, especially yeah. like for depression. But yeah, that's a good one. And from the lyric of modern loneliness, you said, "I've been thinking about my father lately, the person that he made me, and you mentioning about your dad. So is he the one who really influenced you in your life?" I mean, both of my parents and everybody in my life has really influenced mm-hmm. me. I think there's, you know, obviously there's a special kind of influence from from your dad um, that can be like no other. You know, it's like I find myself getting older and being like, oh, I'm in some <laughs> ways I'm just like my dad, and like you can't help it, you know. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was just kind of reflecting on that. Um, yeah, you know, I, I just I see I have some of the same habits. And some mm-hmm. of them, I feel like you know, things I'm trying to work on, I guess, too. Um, okay. Yeah. So about the albums now, how do you describe the whole album? I mean, like uh, the whole theme of the album. Maybe is it about yourself, or maybe there's a love story behind it, or friendship, or what is it? It's really I kind of think of it as like a log of my different emotions on different days. And for me, it was like expressing different parts of my personality. And because before I felt very much like all of my music was about one relationship, like one mm-hmm. love, and like this is about all sorts of stuff in my life, you know, like love, mental health, just like fun songs. There's like fantasy mm-hmm. songs. There's like sad songs. There's there's all sorts of stuff. So it's um, it was really kind of like experimenting with being more free and being more open with the way I made music. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the thing. Okay, any interesting story behind the recording process? Uh, behind the, what'd you say? The what process? The recording process, the whole album. Oh. Maybe you have some stories behind it. 
Yeah. Um, well, one night I thought I wrote the whole album in one night. Like I literally was like, I don't know why. I just had like a really big breakthrough because I was like really depressed. Mm-hmm. And I, before I got help, I remember there was one night where I was sitting with my friends and I was like writing a song about seeing my therapist and like writing so many songs on the keyboard. And I was like, oh my God, like I have the whole concept of the album. I'm going to write it like, and like, I'm like, I was going crazy about it. And then most of those songs didn't even make it on the album. So <laughs> I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> well, actually there is 21 song in your album already. I know, it's so many. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, how do you choose 21 song out of maybe 40 or maybe 50 song into it? Like it was into hard. Your- I think I just tried to live with the songs and really see which ones stuck with me and meant the most to me um, mm-hmm. and the people that I trust around me and um, and which, yeah, that felt like they were filling different roles, you know? Because I don't want to put a billion of the same type of song because I can write a bunch <laughs> of songs that are like similar. Um, but originally it was going to be 15 songs and then mm-hmm. it just kept going up. It was 16, 18, 20, and then 21. And I was like, okay, this, I got to like stop. <laughs> is it hard for you to just stop at 20, like 21? Okay, 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 this is just 21 and then. Done. Yes, yes. I could have gone more for sure. But there'll be so much more music this year, so I'm excited. Okay. So in your album, like how I'm feeling, if you can choose one song that actually you highly recommend, maybe beside the modern loneliness to our listener, what would it be? Ooh. One of my other other favorites, honestly, is Feelings. I love that song so much. It's a really good song. Why is it? Um, It's just such a good, like heartwarming vibe. Um, It's about like when I was first falling in love. Falling in love, falling in love, falling in love with somebody. (laughs) And I don't know, it's just a feel good song. I love it. It just came to mind. Okay, then that will be on our list too. And I heard that you make a podcast. Anyway, where did you usually find a topic for for your podcast? Um, Either I think about it before based on who I'm talking to, or Mm -hmm. I kind of figure it out in the moment. Like sometimes, like, uh, like, I, I, I just started it, so I'm still figuring it out, but. Um, I just want it to be each time like a different kind of take on mental health experiences like loneliness, Mm -hmm. maintaining friendships in today's world, interfacing with digital existence. Like Mm -hmm. I want it to be all of those things. Um, Yeah. So it's really fun. I, I really enjoy it. It's really cool. Of course. That must be really fun. And talk about yeah. your My Blue Foundation, your foundation, your act against the mental health awareness. What yeah. are the regular activities that happen actually in your foundation? Yeah, so I mean, the original thing was um, taking all the um, proceeds from my song Sad Forever and putting them through the foundations of various organizations. Did the same thing with Modern Loneliness Acoustic and we've done a few other things like that. But mm-hmm. Beyond that, like I started to host like panels. So I did like a panel like earlier during quarantine with some artist friends of mine and um, moderator who was amazing. And I mean, my original plan on tour was to visit a local organization in every city that I could and try to learn mm-hmm. about what they're doing and learn how I can help. Because I mm-hmm. wanted to be more than just raising money, donating money. I want it to be a lot more than that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, for me, there's still a lot of like growing to do, you know, in, in terms of really doing something important, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But that's amazing. I mean, like, this is the things that we really need right now during this quarantine. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's someone who really care about it. So, Les, do you have any special message for your fans in Bali? Yes. I just want to say thank you guys so much for supporting me. I'm so bummed that I obviously can't be there right now. Um, but I look forward to seeing you guys. I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy and Mm -hmm. finding ways to to have fun despite the hard times. And yeah, lots of love. Okay. 